gone fishing Got to thinking it over The road to the river's a mighty long way It must be the season No rhyme or no reason Just taking it easy It's my lazy day Well, never mind calling For I ain't a coming Just pass on by me Stay out of my way Cause a little deep thinking Might drive me to drinking Just taking it easy It's my lazy day I'm finding it easy To mind my own business I'm keeping my nose out of everyone's way I'm taking no orders Ain't hiring no people Just taking it easy It's my lazy day Tarnation, we'd have to go to all this fuss. She knows he's welcome. He owns the place. Well, there's no harm in being friendly, Louie. Just courtesy, you might say. He's been paying us good wages for three years. Yes, and if you'd have had any gumption, we'd have spent those three years running a camp of our own. Who do you reckon they are? Is there a telephone here? There's one over yonder in the corner of the kitchen. It don't work usually. Who are you aiming to call from the way up here? Not very sociable, I must say. Look, Carter, there's no rush about this. Come on back to the office and we'll talk it over. This is something that I can't disregard. It's my job. Hello. Operator. must be Dom. a mountain lion. What color, pink? No kidding, look. Say, he's big enough to be a deer killer. Here's a chance to try out my new rifle. <laughs> Looks like you missed him, he's still there. like I'm slipping. <laughs> well, it's Carter. He's dead, Gene. Did it, Joe? I killed him. Oh. 
Oh, Mr. Mitchell. They've been phoning Bill Wright. Carter, the forestry man, has been killed. Carter killed? How? I don't know. Some kind of a hunting accident. And they want Bill at the inquest tomorrow. That bad? We've got $100,000 worth of orders to fill. Maybe Carter's replacement could be talked into playing ball. Better stay with the boys. You hear about Carter? Yeah, too bad. I got something to show you. Looks like it to me. What do you think, Mitchell? It's Tussock Moth, all right. How much of the forest is infested? 50 or 60,000 acres, maybe. Carter discovered it in the back country. We went up together and had a look. Did Carter tell anybody else beside you? He didn't get a chance to. Look, if this thing isn't discovered for a couple of months, those trees can't be saved. They'll die and have to be cut. Instead of only the trees designated for the forestry department. <laughs> maybe that's the answer to our problem. And with our exclusive contract with the state, we'll have a lot of timber. You say you'd never fired this rifle before. Is it new? Yes, sir. I just resigned from the forestry department to take over my new sportsman's camp. When I left, the boys I'd been working with gave me the rifle as a present. I see. Have you arrived at a verdict? We have. It has been shown that the deceased Charles Carter came to his death by accidental means. Namely, a rifle bullet fired by the defendant. Since no evidence to the contrary has been presented, the defendant Autry is hereby exonerated of any criminal intent and discharged. That doesn't bring back my father's life, does it, Dr. Dan? Criminal intent doesn't make any difference. How? Oh. Oh. Now, now, Helen, everything will be all right. Miss Carter, if there's anything I can do, Anything at all. You've done enough already. You'd better get out of here and out of town. All right. Quiet down. Quiet down. We'll see you at the camp, Gene. Abner, you and Lloyd have mentioned several times you'd like to buy the camp. Still want it? Look, son, you can't let this thing happen and knock your plum out. I know what you're thinking. But a man can't run away from what's inside of him. It isn't that, Abner. You sleep on it. And tomorrow, if you're still in a mind to sell, well, we'll talk it over. I'm pulling out tomorrow. The place is for sale, and I'd like for you and Lloyd to have it. We'll buy it, Gene, if you've made up your mind. I have. Might as well go over to the bank right now and fix it up. So you and Lloyd bought Autry's camp, huh? Hmm. Well, it's a mighty pretty spot. There's nothing wrong with you. What seems to be troubling you, Abner? Nothing's troubling. I didn't come here for that. I've been trying to tell you. I got a bank draft here, and we paid Autry for the camp. And when he left this morning, he asked me to give it to you. He said you'd know what to do with it. Oh, yes. Thank you. Excuse me, Dr. Dan. I didn't know you had anyone with you. Oh, that's all right. I got to be going. Uh, so long, Doc. So long, Abner. Right. Sit down. Thank you. I have some money for you, Helen. Quite a sizable sum. What is it, Dr. Dan? Where did it come from? Well, uh, you see, it's, it's from an old life insurance policy your father had. I didn't know Dad had any insurance. Well, <laughs> I guess he clean forgotten all about it. They sent it through me because I made the examination on your father. It was a long time ago. You don't know what this means. I can keep the place up there now. I... 
course you can. And another thing, I've been thinking for a long time of hiring an assistant here. Oh, she wouldn't have to be a trained nurse. Just someone to take my calls and kind of keep this place straightened up here. You know how messy an old man can be. And maybe you can go on calls with me now and then. I think I'd like that. Be something to occupy my time. Keep my mind off. Let's go roaming around the range. Let's go roaming around the range. The days are warm and mellow. The sun is bright and yellow. Let's go roaming around the range. Let's go riding along the trail. Let's go riding, Let's go riding along, along the trail. The trail. Waterfalls are booming, mountain flowers blooming. Let's go riding along the trail. There's a fragrance in the air. The hum of the bees, the rustling leaves, this music to my ear. Come and ride with me there. The song of the trees, the song of the breeze is what I long to hear. Let's go roaming around the rain. Let's go roaming around the rain. Lonely coyotes wailing. Fleecy clouds are sailing, let's go roaming around the rain. we get a few spots here and there each year, but doesn't amount to anything. You found indication of tussock moth? Yeah. Does it look serious? I'm afraid it's plenty serious. Well, have you reported it? Not yet. I want to wait till I make a more thorough inspection. Well, I hope it isn't as serious as you think. I hope not. Well, look, Audrey, I know every foot of that country. I might be of some help. I'll go along with you if you like. I'd be glad to have you. Want to use my glasses? I'll take a look from up above. Thanks.
That was pretty close. Too close. Yeah. It almost got me, too. I yelled at you, but I guess you couldn't hear me. You okay? Yes, I'm all right. I'd better drive Miss Carter home, right? Thank you. See you later. Okay, Audrey. I've been wanting to talk to you. I wanted to tell you that I'm sorry. Please, Miss Carter. I felt I had to tell you not to blame yourself. Not for anything. I can think more clearly now. Thank you. I think you're right, Audrey. The only answer is to spray the entire area with a DDT solution. You think it can be done? Yes, sir. I'm sure it can. What do you think, Doctor? Any chance of the poison affecting wildlife or domestic stock up there? No, I don't think so. If it's used in proper proportion. Spraying more than 100,000 acres from the air is going to be a difficult operation. And a dangerous one. It'll mean low elevation flying over rough terrain. Well, you've got just the boys can do it. We put together for Uncle Sam. It'll also mean building an airstrip in the forest and roads over which to bring up equipment and supplies. Well, you haven't much time. If the moth larvae aren't killed before they mature, the forest will be gone. Isn't that right, Doctor? That's quite correct. According to my calculations, we have over 30 days. Then let's get to work. But, Mr. Hoagland, you forget that... Yeah, I know. You resign. But you'll be in charge, Audrey. You can have anything you need. Nothing must stand in your way. I'm sorry, but I've made other plans. You mean you don't want the job? Oh, it isn't that. I do appreciate the offer. It'd be the biggest assignment I've ever had. But, well, I'm leaving this part of the country. Well, all right. We'll just have to find someone else. Thanks for sending for us. Goodbye, Mr. Hogan. Goodbye, Audrey. And good luck in whatever it is you're going to do. Thank you. Bye, gentlemen. Bye, Gene. So long, Gene. We'd better tell him, fellas. Say, Gene. We've been waiting for a chance to talk to you. We, we got something on our minds. That accident, uh, we, uh, well, we figured it was our fault. We gummed up the sight on that gun we gave you. It was just a gag, Gene. If you'd have what do you mean you gummed it up? Well, we dropped it so it'd shoot way low. You dropped the sight? Then if that gun shot low, I couldn't have hit Carter. He was above the line. You fellas sure? Positive. At 50 yards, you would have hit a good five feet low. Well, that means somebody else shot Carter. Yeah, and it probably wasn't an accident. Now, we should start in this district here. Mr. Hoagland, I've changed my mind. I'll take that job if it's still open. representing a half a million board feet of lumber, and we can't even get them out of the forest. We've got to prevent that spraying operation somehow. Well, how? Do you mind telling me? Perhaps through public opinion. Maybe the ranchers around here won't stand for it if they're convinced it'll kill off their livestock. <laughs>
So that's the stuff, huh? Yeah. Now, I hate to think what'll happen when they turn it loose from those airplanes. They claim it won't do any harm. It'll kill the bugs in the trees. It'll kill everything else, won't it? They say not. I heard of a fellow who sprayed uh, DTT on a dog to kill the fleas. It killed him all right, but it killed the dog too. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen to the fish in the streams? Oh, you talk foolish, Lloyd. Besides, the timber is more important than the fish. Not to the fish, it ain't. <laughs> She's all yours. Sure, I'm okay. Oh. Better come on up to the office. I think it's time we had a little talk. Oh, so I had a drink. So why? Just this. I'm fed up covering up for you. I told you that the last time. Who do you think you are to tell me what I can do? I'll take a drink when and where shut I up. please. Look, Gene, don't tell me to shut up. I, I said shut up. You okay, Joe? Oh, shut up. Hey, Joe. You want a lift? Yeah. Brother, can I use a lift? Well, what's the matter with him? He's all right, Jerry, just a little mixed up. that can be. It isn't the mail plane. It's a small job, listen. Flying low, too. Sounds like it's hedgehopping. Well, there's nobody around here besides us that can fly. You don't suppose that's... Did Joe come in? Not yet. You don't think that could be him flying around up there, do you? He's liable to get himself killed if he hasn't sobered up some since he left here. I'm going to take a ride into town, fellas. That isn't Joe. I think I know where I'll find him. There you go. Eyes are blue. Looks like Jerry. There you go. Stop the car. I'm going back. You're going home. We've got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. So we've got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. I'm going to have another little drink. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yeah. You've had too much already. Oh, it's too early to go home. It's only... It's only... 
see, it's early. Hey, time to go home. It's... Now it's time. That's my little old alarm clock. Tells me when to get up and tells me when to go to bed. That's some watch, eh, Gene? What a watch, Joe. My wife gave me that watch. I found this where you dropped it. She wouldn't be very proud of you tonight. No, I guess she wouldn't. Hair of gold. Eyes of blue. Gene, sing that song for me, will you? All right, Joe. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm going to make her mine. I came down from Butte, Montana, for a little change of scene. And I stopped today in Santa Fe, where I met a pretty queen. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm going to make her mine. Oh, I planned to leave on Monday, but she held me kind of tight. So I held the ground and hung around, and I left on Friday night. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm going to make her mine. At the gate I found her waiting, I was happy as could be. Then I told her that I loved her true, and she said that she loved me. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest gal I ever knew, and I'm going to make her mine. Look, Gene, it's none of my business, but isn't he drinking a lot? Could be. I don't get it. A guy doesn't punish himself like that unless he's nuts. Or else trying to forget something. Have you ever noticed that picture on his instrument panel of his plane? The good-looking blonde? Yeah. I made a crack about it once. He just looked at me kind of funny. Never said a word. That was his wife. She died while he was overseas. Hello, Les. How are you, fellas? We're raring to go. How's the coffee? Only one way to find out. Good morning, Jean. Good morning. Well, hello. You're out kind of early, aren't you? Just on our way back to town. We've been on a case back in the hills most of the night. Have a seat. Thank you. How about a cup of coffee? Yes, please. Yeah, I think I could use one, too. Jean, I'm afraid you miscalculated on this spraying business. What do you mean, Doc? We just found some effects of the work you did yesterday. They weren't so good. I don't get it. We counted more than 20 dead animals on our way down here. Deer, foxes, even fish in the stream. Couldn't have been the spray, Doc. You sure they were poisoned? Yes, Gene, I'm positive. There was a doe and two fawns back there a mile or so. Both were in pretty bad shape. I had to destroy them. Mr. Autry, don't you think this solution you're using should have been tested before you started? It was tested, Miss Carter. Do you suppose someone else could have done it, Gene? I don't know. I was just thinking about that plane we heard last night. Well, at any rate, I think you should stop work. At least until you can make sure what the stuff is doing. Well, we can't stop work. This job's too important. But I wish you wouldn't say anything to anybody about this, Chester. Well, why not, Mr. Autry? If everything we own is to be exposed to this poison, shouldn't we be given the opportunity to take precautions? Well, of course. Then just what do you propose to do about it? I don't know. I'll have to do some checking first. I see. Well, thanks for the coffee. Yes, thanks. Hey, Gene, that guy Wright's been fighting us every inch of the way on this job. And he and Joe have been pretty thick. You don't suppose... Hi, man. Good morning, Joe. Hi. Well, I uh, guess we better get on the job, boy.
Gene, I'm sorry about yesterday. I suppose that sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? That's okay. Joe, did you do any flying last night? Flying? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Did you take a plane off the ground? <laughs> Are you kidding? Hey, what is this, anyway? Oh, nothing. Forget about it. Gene, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. We might as well face this thing. I'm nothing but a no-good drunk. Oh, I've tried to... Now, wait a minute. It's no use. I'm no good to myself or to you or anybody else. I'm checking out this morning. No, you're not. You're going to stay here and fight it out. We're going to whip this thing if I have to beat you half to death. Besides, I need you. I need every man I've got. Now, for about a minute, the boys have got a little number they want to do for you, and it's something different. So let's all be quiet and listen. All right, boys. Every time, Every time I, I feel, feel the, the spirit, spirit moving in my heart. Okay, Mr. Hoagland, I think about everybody in the county is over at the party. Good. I want you to keep them there as long as you can. It'll give us a chance to check up without being seen. We've got to know if our work's been poisoning these animals or if it's something else. I think you'll find it's something else. I'm spreading my men out to cover as much territory as possible. All right, let's go. What happened, Miss Carter? Can I be of any help? I don't think so. I'm afraid it's too late. He looks as though he's been poisoned. How about your other animals? They're all sick. It's that spray, I'm sure of it. I was afraid this would happen, but no one would listen to me. I think it's time we did something about this. I don't know what we can do. 
The doctor and I talked to Mr. Autry, and he still insists that the spray couldn't affect livestock. He had some wild theory about another airplane. Another airplane? What did he mean? I don't know exactly. He said they were going to investigate or something. In the meantime, everything we own will probably be killed off. Well, I'll see what can be done, Miss Carter. There's a river I spied That's a half a mile wide And an inch or two high Calls a little big dry I returned there one day Didn't think that I'd stay But I can't say goodbye To the little big dry There are rivers that you have to pay to cross for bridges that they have to lay across But here's one that you can wade across To the other side where there's nothing but mud And it gets in your blood That's the reason that I Love the little big dry There are songs about the Mississippi and The Swanee River and the Rio Grande but here's the driest river in the land And it's calling me where there's nothing but mud And it gets in your blood That's the reason that I Love the little big dry Love the little big dry Love the little big dry
I'm sorry to break up your party, but this is pretty serious. I tried to warn you all, but you wouldn't listen. That DDT has poisoned everything it's hit. What do you mean? You sure? How do you know? I just came from Helen Carter's, and every animal on her place is either dead or dying. Well, if we're gonna do something, we better do it fast. There's one way of stopping this thing, if you're all with me on it. Where were we, Tom? Wait a minute, folks. You heard what Wright said, didn't you? What are we going to do, wait here until all our stock's been killed? There ain't no harm waiting till morning. They ain't a spraying today. I'm for getting home and looking over my own stock. If things are as bad as Wright says, we can all meet up at my house tonight and decide what we're gonna do about it. All right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. How about it, Doc? It's hard to say. If he regains consciousness by morning, he has a good chance. If Helen hadn't found him when she did, well, we just have to wait and see. I've done everything I can. You might as well get on back, fellas. Go ahead with the job the first thing in the morning, and don't say anything about this. OK, Gene. Good night. Good night, Gene. Good night, Doc. I'll take over till morning. I'm sure there isn't anything more you can do. If you don't mind, I'd like to stay. You go ahead and get some rest. May I fix you some coffee or something? No, thanks. I believe not. Mr. Autry, I can't tell you why, but I know he'll get well. You keep on knowing that, Miss Helen. Good night. Good night. About time you woke up. Yeah. Guess I really stopped one, didn't I? Sure did. Who plugged me? We don't know. Don't worry about it. You're gonna be all right. Yeah, sure. I had just left a sawmill. Gene, that airplane. Now take it easy. No, the one, one you were looking for. I saw it. Belongs to Mitchell. I found it. Now, don't try to talk. The doc will be along in a minute. Yeah. Gene, what does my watch say? 6.30. Huh? I mean the other side. Well, guy. September 3rd, 1941. 1941. Long time ago. Gene, you're the one that ought to wear that watch. Relax now. You're gonna be on your feet in no time. Why, in a couple of weeks, you'll be the same old Joe. <laughs> Is that good? I think so. And you take the watch. All right. I'll wear it a while if it'll make you happy. Maybe, maybe sometime it'll remind you all the cane we used to raise together. Maybe it'll remind you to sing that song for me. You know the one. Morning, Doc. Morning, Gene. Well, let's have a look. It's coming along all right. Hey, Gene. Can you get 
get over to the airstrip right away, I think there's going to be trouble. What kind of trouble? Those guys who've been trying to stop our work here. They had a meeting last night, and they're on their way over to wreck things. Is Hoagland there? No, but his men are on their way. Hoagland couldn't leave town. I've got to go over to the airstrip, Doc. I'll be back as soon as I can. How long will it take to get these planes off the ground? At least a half hour, and they're not gassed up. Then get them inside the hangar. Hey, look! What's on your mind, man? Not a thing, Audrey. We just came up to have a little talk with you. I'm listening. Good. In the first place, these men don't like the idea of your outfit killing off all their livestock. We told you that once before, but I guess you didn't listen. You just want to make sure that you don't spread any more poison around. The poison we sprayed had nothing to do with it. I think Wright knows that. What do you mean by that? I mean Mitchell spraying this whole thing to stop our spraying operation. That's a lot of crazy talk, Audrey. Why would Mitchell want to do that? Because he has an exclusive contract with the state for all the timber. The trees die, can strip the forest clean. Doesn't that make sense? If you want proof, I can give it to you. That's a lot of baloney. All right, let's have it. Can't you see he's just stalling for time? That won't do him any good. You boys stand by and don't let him take them planes off of the ground. Okay, Audrey. What's going on here? We're going to look in that building. Well, suppose I don't want you to. I look anyway. Oh, no, you won't. Doesn't look like that thing could do much spraying. I guess I was wrong. Yeah, I guess you were. Wait a minute. I'm going to hold you men for the marshal. You're under arrest. Get his gun. I suppose you realize you're interfering with the work of officers. I also realize that you assaulted me and forcibly entered this building here. Lock him up in there. Get going. Hello. 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 The 
This is it, all right. The stuff's powerful enough to kill anything. Gotta get up to the airstrip. Find a phone and call the marshal and tell him to get up there with a the posse. Mitchell, get me out of here! Get me out of here! Hey, Audrey's getting away! He's getting away! Get me out of here! All right, fellas, let's go. This is as far as you go, fellas. I ain't fooling. You heard him, boys. Yeah, we are him. Their guns and give me the numbers. We'll see who they belong to.
You know what this means, don't you? The whole thing's blown up right in our faces. Now, wait a minute. I carried out my part, okay? If you hadn't let those two guys get away from me... You better get out of here. Hello, Doc. Can I use your telephone? Go right ahead. Mr. Carter. Hello. Will you see if you can get me to the Marshal's office? What's the matter, Doc? Anything wrong? It's Joe Lucas. He's been shot. Joe shot? Was he killed? No, he's alive, but that's about all. He's up at my place, Mr. Mitchell. Gene Offie's gonna have to take care of him. Oh, all right, operator. Thank you. Will you ring Helen Carter's place for me? Well, I'm sorry to hear about Joe. Do you know who shot him? Not yet. That's why I'm trying to get a hold of the marshal. Gene has the bullet that I took out of Joe. He thinks the marshal might be able to trace the gun that fired it. Hello, Gene. I've been unable to locate the marshal by telephone. Helen and I are going on into town and try and find him. And look, Gene, hang on to that slug of lead. It's the thing that'll probably hang the man who fired it. Okay, Doc. Bye. Now we'll see what happens. Thanks for the use of your phone. Okay, Doc. Did you hear what he said? You better get rid of that rifle of yours and get rid of it fast. But I haven't got it. The Marshal took it. Well, then we've got to get that bullet away from Autry before Autry and the Marshal get together. should take a notion to go for the marshal, he could come in by that other trail and we'd miss him. Well, he'll have to pass that shack in any case. I'll guarantee he won't get by. You men go on. I don't know. There's a yellow rose in Texas I'm going there to see. No other fella knows her, nobody else but me. She cried so when I left her, it like to broke my heart. And if we ever meet again, we never more shall part. She's the sweetest rose of color this fellow ever knew. Her eyes are bright as diamonds, they sparkle like the dew. You may talk about your dearest maids and sing of Rosalie. But the yellow rose of Texas beats the bells of Tennessee. Drop it. Get out of here, right? 
Get to your horse. I'll cover you. Good work, Lieutenant. I'll get the horses. All right, let's go. Keep an eye on him, Joe. We'll be back as soon as we can. Right, Jane. Wait a minute, Autry. I'll make a deal with you. You take it easy on me, and I'll tell you where you can find Bill Wright. We'll talk about a deal later. Where is he? The deserted shack at the fork in the trail. We were to meet there in an hour if anything went wrong. Where was Gene going? Wright got away. Gene's gone to that deserted shack to look for him. The shack? But Mitchell's waiting there to kill Gene. Dr. Dunn, we've got to get to him and warn him. You haven't got a chance. Well, he's got a two-mile start. He'll be there before you can possibly overtake him. We can try. Wait a minute, Joe. We got a passenger. Now take that gun. Goodbye, Jean. Good luck. Goodbye, Lloyd. Goodbye, Jean. Abner. Goodbye, Dee. Goodbye, Jean, and thanks for everything. Goodbye, Helen.
We'll be expecting you back next week. Looks like you might have a permanent job here, huh? Looks like I might. Looks like you might, too, huh? <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Jean. Bye. Goodbye. Go so on, folks. Yeah. Seems kind of strange, going back without Joe. Sure does. Well, I'll be doggone. Now, what do you suppose made that thing ring? I wouldn't know, fellas. I was feeling blue and lonely, so I took my horse and pack. And Sunday morning was up and gone, and I won't be coming back. Hair of gold, eyes of blue, lips like cherry wine. The prettiest girl I ever knew, and I'm going to make her mine.